Honesty, bruv. <coughs> You're welcome. Am I far enough back or do you think I should be closer? Well, um, let's say hello. Hello. Hello, my name's Dan. That's all right so far. Hi, my name's Matt Hoss and today I will be sucking your balls. Uh, uh, sorry, that's a, that's a mic check. Uh, that's, that's what we say in mic check. You know, it is, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Testing, testing, testies, testies, <laughs> testies, <laughs> testies, one, two, three, testies, one, two, three, four. All our testies are here. <laughs> How many testicles do you have, Dan? Now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, uh, one. Wow. What, what? What happened to it? The other one. It got lost, didn't it? It where? Well, that, I woke up, didn't I? It wasn't there anymore. <laughs> when? When did this happen? A couple of years back. A couple of years back. Yeah. Were we friends at this point? No. Oh, before pre before pre hoss pre hoss like you know, like it, Christians have uh, B C and A D. It you should have. Uh, P, P H and now. <laughs> no, it was weird. It went missing, and I couldn't didn't know where it was. And then that kind of afternoon, I went for a poo, and I was looked in the toilet, and I was like, "Oh, there it is!" <laughs> like a headphone got lost. In... <laughs> oh no! Oh, I left my bullet there. It's oh. in a jar now in my room. Yeah, I bet you, <laughs> like a pickled egg. Like a, yeah, in a, in a chip <laughs> shop when you have. A, <laughs> a pickled... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, Oh, uh, that'll stay in, yeah, that'll good. <laughs> Welcome to Myths. I'm Matt Hoss. And I'm Dan Rhodes. Whether you know about Theseus or you're revising your syllabus. If you want tales with a bit of jest or you just want to hear about incest. What? What? It's really interesting. Welcome to Myths. Welcome to Myths. Hello and welcome to episode 66 of... Myths. <laughs> well done there. Um, hi, I'm Matt Hoss and my, this is my co-host, Mr. Dan Rhodes. I slapped you in the leg there. You did? So, sorry, I didn't... That was nice. Yeah. Jo- very jovial. Yeah, very, like, I haven't seen you for a while. I slapped you in the leg. Catch up on good times. Yeah. So, uh, how have you been? I've been pretty good, Matt. How have you been? I'm not sure you can tell by my voice, but I'm slightly ill today. Oh, uh, get away from me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say what disease yeah. it was, yeah. I've, uh... Make you sleep on the sofa. Yeah! <laughs> nice. Good. One minute in. Good, good work, Dan. Thank good. You. I love a good callback. You know, I'm pretty sure the people that, who listen to this don't enjoy it as much as I do, but it's not for them. No. <laughs> At this point. <laughs> 66 episodes in, it's not for them. Um, but yeah, I am a little bit ill, but, you know, I'm soldiering on, you know, like a... Uh, but you know, uh, it's, it's all good. Um, what's what's new in the life of Dan Rhodes? Uh, what is new in the life of Dan Rhodes? I went to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child recently. I didn't know that was a genuine thing. Like I forgot. Uh, like, so is that like a, a, a like a sequel to the series? No. Yes and no. It obviously it was written by J.K. Rowling as a play. It is basically Harry Potter's children when they're at school. Okay, that's or in particular his middle child at school. The cursed child? The, yeah. Uh, Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Um, but you see... <laughs> that's uh, Spanish version. It's two parts. Um, so it's one big play, but two parts. So you have to see part one in the... I went to see part one in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Then you go, and you come back in the evening and see part two. Do you have to see both parts on the same day? You don't. You can see them in consecutive nights okay. if you want to. But do you, did you have the same seats? Yes. Oh, if you can see that on Saturdays, they do. It's just one day. Ooh. That's pretty cool. Uh... Uh, so, did you enjoy it? Was it good? I did. It was very, very enjoyable. Yeah. I did this at the end. Cool. That was enjoyable. <laughs> and for Dan Rhodes, that's essentially crying with laughter. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, um, that's that's pretty that's pretty good. For, uh, Leg room was an issue, but... Uh, wow. What, 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 tell us about that. It was an issue? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No, was, if you're... I would say if you are... But if you're not a tall man. Yeah, if you're taller than f- five foot eight... You're probably going to struggle. So, is it quite uncomfortable? And especially me, because uh, as you can test to, I'm all leg. You are all leg. In fact, you are Dan Rhodes' head, neck, and legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my <laughs> nipples are actually where my pelvis are. <laughs> Just two <through> spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it was, but it was, it was still very enjoyable. <laughs> Sorry, it's a very funny image that it's just your head and neck and just two very long legs. Yeah, basically. <laughs> just sitting down would be an issue, yeah. wouldn't it? Like, yeah. Just like, you've got a very bent neck. You know, sorry, that. Again, just for me, that one, but like a. Um, uh, but no, very good. The illusions are very good. Magic tricks are very slick. 
Oh. Very good storyline too. I've never. Some people have read the play because actually it came out as a book. A lot of people have read the play. Yeah. Just, you could read it before it came out. Um, uh, so, but I know I didn't. Know, I literally knew nothing about what happened. And I yeah, thought it was very good. Because I'm literally to be honest. As soon as I, I read the books as a kid uh, and I watched the films as like an early teenager. But since then, I found not to watch Harry Potter no, for a very long I time. Haven't, um, but no, quite uh, love Harry Potter though. I like I like a good franchise slash universe. Kind of. Um, I think I think a lot of people are into Harry Potter way more than I am, if yeah. you know what I mean. But I feel like I'm that person of Game of Thrones and Marvel, but for I, but Harry Potter... I was going to say, things that Matt Hottest enjoys, uh, Game of Thrones, yeah. that's a universe. Yeah. Avengers, that's his oh. universe. Uh, Lord of the Rings, oh. Star Wars... It's like, like, why not Harry Potter? It's weird, isn't it? Well, I do like Harry Potter, I just I'm not into it as much. Yeah, if you know what I mean? Like, you think I, you like, would be, wouldn't you? Just because you are someone that really enjoys those kind of things, where it's like a whole universe. Well, and all that. I think I, to be honest, I think if I were to, I'm tempted that to get the audio books written by Stephen, uh, read by Stephen Fry. Uh, in fact, if, if it was written by Stephen Fry, I think it might explode, <laughs> like in every sense of the word. Uh, uh, but I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think if I listen to them, I might get into it way yeah, more. Yeah. But I think, uh, then again, I think, I remember when I was into Queen and Witch, but then I got back into Queen. Yeah. I think that's the kind of thing. I think as that's soon, what you would do. I, you would go 110% yeah. and you'd be like the biggest Harry Potter nerd ever. Because I think I'll get a Hufflepuff tattooed on my thigh. <laughs> if you know what I, mean. yeah. like, I think it's only, it's because of my hiatus allows me to not be that into it, if okay. you know what I mean. But if I were to watch the films again, it'd be like crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but um, also we're talking about Avengers as well um, uh, Avengers came out uh, a, well, a couple of weeks ago now but uh, we haven't spoke to each other since then and we're not going to talk about spoilers or the plot but like uh, I had a bit of a weird viewing experience for it though like because um, like when do you think Matt Hoss is going to see Avengers Endgame opening night uh, I, it, it came well actually it came out on the midnight release which I didn't see because I gotta get up early in the morning I'm not gonna say like 3 o'clock in the morning just to watch a, 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 a superhero film but I did get up at 7 o'clock to watch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was an early morning show which, which it was actually a little bit more damning because it means I had no day job to get to if you know what I mean was setting your alarm the night before a bit like a kid before Christmas um, you assume that I could sleep. Uh, yeah. also, in fact, I should have went to the midnight screen because I was so excited. Honestly, I was I, I was like genuinely stressed out by it. But I went. Um, it was a bit of a week because I went with my friend Mark, and a couple of days beforehand, I, took, I showed Mark through a lot of the main Marvel things to watch beforehand because he hadn't seen Infinity War or anything like that. So I took him through that, and Mark was he was the thought that you would take someone that wasn't as involved blows my mind. Well, that's the thing because I think. As I was there, I was like, oh, this is troublesome, because he said, oh, I'll be there, because uh, um, I think it was uh, it was a 7 a.m. viewing, uh, and I got there at half six uh, in the morning, and I said, oh, Mark, I'll meet you there at quarter to seven, and he didn't turn up to five to seven, and I almost lost my shit. <laughs> and the thing is, the film wasn't starting at eight, it, like, yeah, it started at seven, it started at, um, it started like at, like half an hour afterwards, I mean, but I was like, we have to watch all that, all the Thanos comes in the adverts! And like, he was, like, the levels, like, I, uh, Mark was like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, I, kiss me, Thanos! Uh, you know what I mean? The, the two levels of disinterest was there. And it's weird going at seven a.m. as well, dude, because like, like See, I, it's I, a I, weird I vibe. Even, I went on a Friday evening. But you have a day job, a good, though. Yeah, so that's true. That's what, but that's because I went there and there was my people there. And I was like, Solidarity Brothers, because, you know, like we were all nerds there. And that's the kind of people I want to see it with. I don't want to see it with people. Yeah, at least, you know, the people that are going to get up and see it in the morning are people that are going to shut up. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And Which, to be honest, I have to admit, the Friday night viewing, I was a bit conscious of people being rowdy. But everyone was so into Infinity. Everyone was so into it. The yeah. minute it came, you know, when it does yeah. the, you know, when the screen does that wide yeah, and then yeah. it comes up with a certificate. Everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and because like there was some people, there was one person talking at the back, and he came. He, that loser came at five past seven. <laughs> five past seven, amateur hour. <laughs> you know, actually, there was a person who came in at quarter past seven, and I almost lost my shit. Yeah, and, we had someone come in at, like the, in the robe in front of us, and they did that awkward thing when they get their torch out to see what they're doing, and everyone yeah. was like, "Snooze your news, dickhead." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, could, the opening scene again no spoilers the opening scene is uh, very quiet it's very yeah. like um, uh, tranquil tranquil yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone was like shh the fuck yeah 
And there's always one person eating popcorn. But that's a, at seven a.m. though. It's a bit of a weird experience because like. Like, what, did you have popcorn what, for breakfast? What, that, what, that's it. What do you have there? Because you can't exactly have tango for breakfast. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. So I, I did see two uh, two guys have massive buckets of popcorn. I was like, come on, mate. Like, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I I ordered coffee, but I was like, that's. I, then you need a wee. Yeah, it feels it was a, it was a, it's problematic. But I I would rather piss myself than. Uh, I needed the toilet about thirty minutes in. You and amateur, here's the testament amateur, to how good uh, Endgame. Amateur. Here's the testament to how good Endgame was. Oh, I just thought loads there. I just drink a lot uh, and I have a tiny butter. Because um, <laughs> your legs. Yeah. You have your big legs, tiny butter. Uh, the testament to Endgame is that I needed the toilet quite early on, but it's such a good movie, I didn't even really notice. Yeah, that's it. That, honestly, yeah. that's it. Because I think my mind was like, but you better go now. But like, I was just like, so I was so watching it. it that I was like, I forgot I even needed the toilet. And uh, it was quite, I enjoyed it a lot, but the th- like, it was one of, the, I think honestly one of my favourite films ever. But also, like, I think I enjoyed it too much, Dan, because like, Bear in mind, I was someone who's into it a lot less than I am. I, throughout the film, I was going to say four, 14 times, I made noises which were akin to orgasm noises. <laughs> okay. That was a bit... I have I, watched Infinity War with you, and that was an experience. Oh. Even just watching it with... You watching it the second time on DVD. Like, I'm even thinking about it now, and I'm like, ha ha ha. Because I remember there's a certain bit... Uh, and one of my favourite characters did something very cool and I was like oh, oh god and it was like the biggest sexual experience for yeah. me and also I talk um, I also I, <laughs> I'm not sure if this should go in the podcast but on Thursday I was talking to a pretty lady about Avengers uh, Avengers Endgame and she was talking to me about it and she was saying like all these plot stuff and I was like oh, like honestly, getting like uh, yeah. sweaty under the collar. It's like you I was love, like cocaine addict. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's like my like, dirty talk. I mean, the time I saw Infinity War with you it was yes, yeah, we, yeah. We were in Tesco's. It was because it, it just came out on DVD. The DVD had just come out, and Matt Hart locked eyes with it across the cor- across the aisle. And I've never seen Matt Hart drop a tenner on something so quickly in my life. <laughs> Do you don't like spending money? No, I do not. No, no, no. That's one of the very many things about me. I do yeah. not like spending money, and I've never seen your wallet open so quickly. Honestly, like I. I... Take this money! Matt, it's twelve ninety nine. I said take it! <laughs> I will give you my hand for it! Uh, I honestly, uh, I'm, I'm very, very close to buying the Spider-Verse uh, like DVD as well, because that was amazing as well. So, mm. oh, Here's a question, yeah. uh, compiling both of these. Having seen it, having remembered, obviously, having, no, having, having remembered how amazing, how the anticipation you felt for watching Endgame. Yeah. What is the most amount of money you would have paid to have seen Endgame in the first week it came out at the cinema? Oh, that's a good question, because... Well, because... This will let me realise how much I know, you know, I'll... I'll... Okay, uh, can I slightly rephrase the question? Okay. Uh, how much money would I give, knowing now of what I think of the film, uh, to see it again but not remember what happened? Yeah. Hmm... Because my physical nature is also overriding my kind of like my nerd brain, and I think I'm like, uh, okay, I think honestly, I think I would pay about fifty pounds to see it again. Because I think, well, I'm gonna see it ten times anyway at the cinema, and like at, at my cinema, it's cost five pounds, so that's like basically you're saving money. You yeah, know that's I mean, true. like, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, wow. Oh, I think. Yeah, how about you? Well, how much would you charge? I think thirty pounds. Thirty pounds is reasonable. Yeah, because I which shows how good it is. Because I mean, not many films I'd say, oh, I would like to pay thirty pounds to see that in cinema. Other. But then again, that's just like seeing it twice. That exactly. Yeah. 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 Do you remember when we see a quiet place? And oh my god! Yeah. The guy asked Matt for what was it? Eleven, twelve quid? I think it was fifteen quid. And uh, Matt nearly fainted. Yeah, it's like oh, I could see three average films, but then again, a quiet place uh, was needed to be in the cinema. Yeah, and it was. Atmospheric is good. Uh, oh man, I, I must say, I don't think. Can I take a break from this podcast? Because so, I think I need to just like, like, I think about Avengers for because I've been thinking about it nonstop for that. Like, I've I've been doing gigs where I've been thinking about it as well. So, <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Uh, oh dearie me. Uh, anyway, should we uh, should we get crack on with the podcast, or should we? Is there anything else we want to put in quickly? Or no, nah, yeah. we're going to do more than one today. Oh, Dan, who's your favorite Avenger? All of the Guardians of the Galaxy, do they count as one? Mm, no. Okay. You'd have to have two. You'd have, oh, have two. two? Yeah. I would probably say... I do like Drax. Really? Yeah, just because I think... He's very comedic. Deadpan. Very deadpan. I like him as a character. I have a lot of time for him. Um, in terms of actual, like, Avenger... 
you know what? I'm a Hulk man. Really? I'm a Hulk man. Yeah. Interesting. Because no, I can't talk about the plot. Oh, Brian uh, Man. man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I, I did not expect that from you, Dan. Yeah. Well, so. I, I, uh, but when I said two, I meant two Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, two guys. Oh, yeah. then uh, Peter Quill. Okay, and Drax, Drax. Yeah. What that? Oh, that's a good. Ooh. I'm definitely a rocket guy because okay. I like his cheeky nature, but also very sentimental on the inside. Yeah. Uh, that's that's my guy. Uh, I, but uh, I think I, I'm definitely I'm definitely you're definitely a Captain America. Let's I, not be it, about the bush. yeah. Because like as we've discussed in the Christmas episode, like uh, I I love Captain America and. Also, I think I'm a Matt wore my uh, Captain America yes, jumper. And, to the... Yes, and I put it on Instagram, and because uh, I put a very, very self, uh, a very emotional, <laughs> a very emotional post on Instagram saying I can't wait to see my favorite film, and like it got not very many likes, but one person was like, "Oh, bless you, mate." It's like that's not the term I was going for. <laughs> so people think pityingly, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's the only time I. It's like. Seeing Avengers is like Nerd's Christmas for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every Christmas I'm going to buy you a different Avengers jumper. Oh, that's the kind of noise I make, by the way. But I actually, I really want to buy Avengers jacket. There's one uh, on Nerdroid. Christmas idea. Uh, it's it's like it's like fifty quid, but I would spend that much money on uh, seeing it again. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really oh yeah. I think, uh, but I think. Uh, Peter Parker is also. Uh, hey, you're a Spider Man guy. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Spider Man guy. Always have been. In fact, the, um, I was actually remembering on PlayStation One, I was watching Spider Man. Uh, I played the Spider Man game PS One. Did you Did you ever do that? Uh, I think I had it on computer actually at the time. Oh, very cool. I had a PC version. Because at the end, you have to escape car because Carnage chases you through. Do you remember Carnage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you don't know who Carnage is, it's like. Um, it's like Venom, but uh, with a bit more like horrible and Venom, uh, like a bit more uh, evil, I guess. Uh, um, and uh, it, you have to like escape, uh, it, go for this trap and escape uh, Carnage. And again, Captain America picks you up in Quinjet and goes, "Come on, Spider Man!" And I was like, "And when I first, this is the first time I ever met Captain America, I was like, what, the, what is this ending? You know, it's yeah. very weird." Good, good game. Okay. Good game. How many people do you think we alienated that haven't seen Avengers or don't like Marvel movies? Um, guys, I'm not. I'm not an aggressive person. I'm not. A, uh, I'm not a vindictive person. But if you don't like Marvel and you like this podcast, well, get out. I don't want that. No, please. I think people that listen to this podcast are the kind of people that would. Yeah, I like think Marvel. I mean, if it, there's a big Venn diagram overlap here, so. But yeah, if if you've been <laughs> if you've been alienated by this section of the podcast. And you just want to hear a myth? Please email us at mythpodcast at gmail dot com. There you go. Little, uh, yeah. Actually, don't. That, I think that'll be awful. Actually, uh, don't do that. But we should probably talk about a myth at some point. We should. How about the myth of Avengers Endgame? No. Uh, all right. Let's let's crack on, Dan. Actually, before we do that, we we, we both got cups of tea. Should we do like a Walton Gromit moment where we like clunk glasses? We're gonna clunk glasses. Let's go on with the Myth Podcast. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> now I'm going to do it with the tea. <laughs> hey there, my name is Matt Huss, and in this link I have an American accent, and I advocate the safe use of missed podcasts in small doses. Excellent word, Daniel. Um, and you've got a bit of tea dribble on my leg as well. Yep. Anyway, Dan, uh, pleasure to be back in the... The four rays of myths. We had myths chronicled last week, which was... Get us back in the mood. Get us back in the mood. Oosh, oosh. Guess what I was watching the other day? This is also Marvel-related. I do apologise, more people. This is very quick. Uh, I'm watching Punisher Season 2. Oh. She mentions... Uh, have you seen it? Yes, yeah. Uh, one of the characters mentions Asclepius. Oh, really? To Billy Russo, the therapist. That's real. Oh, yeah! He picks up a statue yeah. and he's like, what's this? And she's like, oh, that's this... She says Asclepius, but we know she's saying it wrong. Uh, yeah, obviously, because, you know, we do all the research. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we did that the other day! Yeah, but I think that actually, the programme has actually watched, uh, li- well, listened to Miss. I actually made, genuinely made a mistake. Uh, uh, she listened to this podcast, and they were like, yeah, 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 um, let's, let's stick it in. That's, that's what they did, even though it came out way before. The Matt, what on earth is today's myth? Today, we are doing, the, I think it's pronounced... The the Danites? The Danites. The, the Danites? Danites, Danites. Danites. Should we say Danites? I think that's Miss Danites, I think. Because I think uh, otherwise it sounds like we're saying Danades. And uh, 
I think Danites. Danites. The Danites. The Danites. The Danites. So, have you heard about these people before? I have no idea, but I think we're about to find out. Because I haven't even read the myths, so uh, I it could be full of plot. I haven't either, and I put this together. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a common theme, isn't it? When uh, that's the, never gone wrong for yeah, us, yeah, yeah. uh, Exhibit when, A. Last the idea that we would write a myth but not actually read it—it's quite impressive, actually, that we do that. But then again, it's I, really impressive. But then again, it also, we, we actually, ironically, do spend time putting the. But we don't read the content of it, if you know. Because but then again, it allows us to not. It's organic then, you know what I mean? Because then otherwise, because remember Ethiopia Gate? Because we didn't read that. No. Because we, I think we would have would have ruined the magic of it. Yeah. Right? Me and Matt research this by s- mixing sources together and getting a good idea. And sometimes sentences can uh, pop up that we didn't know were in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> like some some freer than the others because sometimes a little bit racist. Sometimes. Um, shall I begin today, Matt? Yes, Daniel. That'd be absolutely delightful. The story of the Danites begins with the rivalry between the twin sons of Belus, the king of Egypt. Ooh, Egypt. Ooh. They don't they come up very often, does it? No. Ooh. Egypt. <laughs> Have you ever been to Egypt? No. Would you, would you like to? I would like to, yeah. Belus was believed to be a descendant of Io, a princess of Argos who lived most of her life in Egypt. How do we know Io? Call back. Uh, Juno and her rivals. Juno and her rivals. She was a cow that ran into the sea and then that's why it's called the Ionian Sea. Yeah. Dan, you're on, you are on fire. But she was from Egypt but grew up in Argos. Belus had two sons, Danius and... Oh, here we go. Yeah. Egyptius. I think it's Egyptus. Egypt. Ooh, nice. Egyptus. That's Danus? Spelled, uh, it's spelled A-E-G-Y-P-T-U-S. It's basically Egypt, but... Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say, because one of your son, uh, sons is called Dan Anus, and the other one's called Egyptus. <laughs> like, that's not original name, is <laughs> it? So this king of Egypt, Belius, he had two sons, Dan- Danius and Egyptus. When Belus died, he ordered Danaeus, king of Libya... And Egyptus, king of Arabia. Ooh, nice. Okay, so, so he, on his deathbed, he said to one of his sons, you're the king of Libya. Yeah. His other son, you're the king of Arabia. Okay. What happened to Egypt? Yeah, he's, he's taken over Egypt. Because the guy who what? was in charge is dead now. Obviously, Egyptus has to take over Egypt. Or else, that is just confusing. Yeah. Like, otherwise, why call him Egypt? Yeah, he's looking after Egypt. Anyway, the two brothers had regular rivalries over their kingdoms and were trying one to get the other's hand. Land. The two brothers had regular <laughs> rivalries over their kingdoms and were trying to get the other's land. The most interesting fact about these brothers is their progeny. Ooh. Okay, so we have... Matt, take it away. Two rival brothers trying to... Two rival kings slash brothers. Yeah, they're sandwiched between... One's on one side of Egypt, the other's on the other side of Egypt. I see. Um, okay. Uh, the myth says that Danaeus had 50 daughters... Known as the Danites, um, from four different women. Wow, that's, that's a... wow, and that's what the name of the myth is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, um, should we just go home at this point? This is we, we smashed this podcast, <laughs> like, um, so, uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, daughters, the Danites, by four different women. Uh, however, Egyptus had 50 sons. Oh my fucking god, uh, uh, that is. That is going to be an awful Christmas party, yeah. isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, like imagine trying to send Christ- like birthday cards all the time. Also, imagine how many... Oh, my God. Because there's 50 of you, so that's a lot of cousins. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. There's, there's so much... And also, if there's only four mother, Well, eight mothers in total between 100 kids, that's... Firstly, uh, I bet the kings aren't going to be helping around at home. Secondly, that's... In terms of, like... Getting kids out, if you know what I mean, that's... Could What's be... the age gap between the oldest and the youngest? Yeah, that, so, so each mum has 25, bought 25 kids, is that right? Before... <laughs> no, 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 I've, uh, 12. <laughs> 12, sorry, 12. 5, oh god, I'm really good at maths, okay? 12.5 kids. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jesus, genuinely embarrassing now, huh? <laughs> So, I, so you, this is what I, I'm trying to do podcasting, but also mass at the same time. It's hard. So one 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 sons had uh, fifty daughters, the others had fifty sons. But uh, what I mean is like twelve point, like, like the average twelve point five. That's quite a lot. That's a lot of labour. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm just going to quickly move on. Uh, the intelligent Egyptus wanted to get his sons married to the Danites. Whoa, 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 but they're, they're cousins. Yeah, 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 that's deeply Right, you're all marrying your cousins because there's 50 of them and 50 of you. In all fairness, that was, that was a lot. Just do it in a single day, yeah. nice and easy, you know what I mean? So, so far, this, this myth is very convenient, you know what I mean? Also, if you have 50 sons and 50 daughters, the chances of at least one of them not being gay is quite... <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean, I feel bad it's, for them. It's very heteronormative, this one. It is. Look at us getting on our, like, on our high horses. Uh, uh, for Egyptus, these 50 marriages appeared as an easy route to acquire the properties of Dan- uh, Danaeus. Danaeus also understood the plan of his brother and was not willing to surrender his beautiful daughters to his nasty nephews. Uh, guided by the gods and not intending to cause a war between them, he decided to give his kingdom to his brother and leave the country in search of another life. Danaeus built a ship with 50 oars and fled to Greece with his 50 daughters. Okay, so... Grab a paddle, ladies, we're off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so he doesn't want to give up his kingdom, but also instantly he's like, all right, see ya, if you know what I mean. But, may I just say, I know I was just mocking him a second ago, but this is actually quite a nice dad. You know? It is, it is. For the first time, he's actually put his daughters in front of Pride. Nina. Yeah, he's given his, right, Yeah, he's given them Libya. It's a big place. Yeah, exactly. Mostly sand, to be honest. <laughs> Have you been there? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, I haven't been since my Uncle Gaddafi. <laughs> Dan Gaffey. Uh, Dan Gaffey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, he's left. Anyway. Arriving in Argos, they first made a stop in... Your, Rhodes! Your, your spiritual home. My spiritual home. Where they founded Lindos Town and built a temple to goddess Athena... Lindinia. Lindinia. Is that her surname? Yeah. <laughs> Danaeus and his daughters <laughs> reached Argos, the birthplace of his great-grandmother, the Argian prince, Io. The minute he stepped off the ship, he went to Glenarius, the king of the town, and demanded to be given the throne. But he was the rightful heir, as descendant of Io. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, get a lot of that in these myths, don't you? Yeah. Like, oh, Great Game of Thrones. That. Yeah, yeah. I declare myself to the throne. Uh, knock, knock. I'm here and I'm on the throne. Yeah. Why? Uh, because my great great grandmother was. Uh... Yeah, it's very. It, imagine if it was like if this uh, Glenorus was like democratically voted in. It's like, oh, actually, my my granddad was actually uh, uh, he was a farmer here once, so I'm, I'm, I'm the throne king. You know what I mean? When the people of Argos were about to choose their king, a wolf entered the city <laughs> and, and tore a bull into pieces. <laughs> the people of Argos <laughs> took this as a sign and chose Danaeus as their king. What? <laughs> what? So, and in so, Greek mythology. Uh, all right, imagine that any time in Greek mythology anything happens, like oh, we love that, don't we? An eagle just pecked that serpent's eyes out. Well, I guess I've got to pick this guy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, all like, oh, I stubbed my toe on a hedgehog. We will have a good harvest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, let's let's throw some things at me and uh, let's do some back and forth things like uh, like that. And let's do some like fake prophecies because this happens all the time, especially in the Odyssey as well. It was like five birds um, flew across the sky in a certain way. Well, that means Odysseus must be king. But uh, okay, throw some things at me like animals and I have to give it a prophecy. Okay. Or um, well, I can do you first. Um, okay, I've got one. A goat... A goat kicks over a bucket of milk. Oh, that means that um, uh, that your mother will die. Nice. Not, not not your mother, but like uh, uh, the person's mother. Yeah. Um, uh, anyway, sorry. Danaeus ruled Argos for many years and was leading a quiet life until one day a foreign ship came. His brother Egyptus had sent his fifty sons to find Danaeus oh. and tried to take over his new kingdom. I mean, you've already got the other one. He's Calm down. very greedy. Soon the sons of Egyptus presented themselves to the palace and asked once more to marry their cousins, the Danaids. <laughs> the Danaids. The Danaids. Danaids? Danaids. Um, yeah, so Egyptus is not a nice guy, is he? And his 50... Logistically, I, I, what I'm struggling with here at the moment is the... Firstly, the convenience of having 50 daughters and sons each, but also the logistics of getting all the sons to propose at the same yes, time. yeah. And, like... Do they have they been mixed and matched and like if like it's just annoying me, you mm. know what I mean? I want to know more details. Anyway, Danaeus didn't want that his beautiful and prosperous Ar I don't think that makes sense. Danaeus didn't want his beautiful Argos and prosper 
Daenerys didn't want his, his beautiful, beautiful and prosperous Argos yeah, yeah. to suffer. This is one. Uh, Daenerys didn't want his beautiful and prosperous Argos to suffer because of a war. Having no other option, he consented for the wedding and organised a low-profile wedding party. Uh, I don't think 50 people marrying other 50 more people is a low-profile wedding. No, no, that, that's... that's uh, Already there's 100 people at that wedding. And again, let's talk about... Good maths. <laughs> 12 point five, twelve point five. <laughs> um But also, the catering must be a nightmare. Oh, right? yeah. Like, like, trying to find a wedding venue with that size, 50 people getting married at the same time... Is it all on the same day? Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, God, I am didn't... I, I'm Is it like, do you, blah, 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 and they all go like, yes! Yeah. Also, you know, it's, it wouldn't be a very special day, would it? You know, if you're like, oh, let's say we all get married, you know, it's like an anniversary day. You know, it's... it's all I'm saying is there's not a lot of TLC in this mess. No. You know what I mean? I think I'm very hormonal today. <laughs> Daenerys made a secret plan to get rid of Egyptus and his sons for good. Before the wedding, he presented each of his daughters a dagger and instructed them to kill their husbands in the wedding na- in their wedding night. All his daughters had to obey their father because disobeying your parents was a great wrongdoing in the ancient world. Okay, let's pause. Hold the phone there. Oh, ancient world. What's a great sin? Disobeying your parents is the greatest sin. But not murder. <laughs> no, murder is totally cool as long as uh, you're killing it. Yeah, as long as your mum or dad tells you to do yeah, it. Yeah, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's a weird one, isn't it? Um, so, all the way through, I thought Daenerys was a nice guy, but then he's just like, murder. She was, though. He's probably sick of this shit. In he's already f- given him his land before. He's had to relocate his whole family, which, by the way, is 50 bloody people. Yeah, And yeah. then he's had to, like, and his wives... And then he's got here, he's had a nice life, and then he's turned up and they're like, oh, by the way, we want this now too. Yeah. He's like, jeez, I only just took it off this last guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and in all fairness, I think Egyptus kind of has it coming, but also it is 50 people are going to die, and he's forcing his daughters to kill. Yeah. So, not all I'm saying, well, he's definitely saved costs in the wedding, that's all I'm saying. Uh, they indeed killed their bridegrooms and buried their heads in Lerma. A uh, region with uh, lakes in southern Argos. Okay, so... N- firstly, you just ask them to murder them. But all of them, without fail, have decapitated them. And, by the way, with a dagger. And that's quite hard, if you know what I mean. You know what I Because mean? daggers are only small blades. So, try to decapitate someone. Yeah, that's quite difficult. Difficult. And you would know, because you're, you're a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. How many people have you killed? In excess of... Minus two. <laughs> Because I saved... No, because when you save a life... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of... So I think I'm on minus two at the moment. Because I've saved more than I've killed. You've saved 105 people. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Only one of the girls, Hypomnestra, did not commit this horrible crime. She, oh, I nailed that name, didn't you I? You did. She felt pity for her husband. Oh, no. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Yeah. Lysinus. Uh, Lincius. Lincius. She felt pity for her husband, Lincius, and spared his life. Without a doubt, Danaeus brought her in front of the Argos court. However, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, intervened and saved her from punishment. L- Lincius, the only survivor of the 50 sons of Egyptus, later killed Danaeus to revenge oh, for his brothers. Oh. Lincius and Hypomnestra started a new dynasty of Ar- 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 Argive kings, known as the Danaean dynasty. Okay, so, wait, so there's a lot taken there, so... Um uh, the uh, hypernest were born from court and then she's spared by Aphrodite. Aphrodite. But then... He like, gets revenge on her li- dad. Li- li- on dad. Uh, well, Lysinus does it, yeah. And his father Wow, that's pretty intense. Mm. But then that also created the dynasty, though. Like, yeah. uh, I think you would be pissed if you were all 49 of your brothers had just been killed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure some of them you probably didn't get on well with. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh bloody, bloody Dave. Yeah. <laughs> I, love that you, I love that you're doing all the lists and you only get to 48 and they're like, Linnaeus... You've only read 48 names out. You had 49 brothers. Well, Peter's a dick, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Peter, uh, what he did is he, uh, he actually created his own service station. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, uh, this... this um, I also... I'm trying to remember... Uh, I'm trying to think why I knew the name Danaean. And uh, I, I think this myth is actually serving a point of, and I'll probably talk about this in a second. It's an origin story for a family tree that we come across. Because... Um, the the uh, the Danan, um or Danaean uh, is a uh, um, another term for Greek for like kind of and as you said Argive as well uh, so it's like kind of 
Athenian, like early, early, like a uh, early Grecian um, name for Greeks, if you know what I mean. So, so that's where they're kind it's of their origin story. Is yeah. that the House of Pelops? Is that their origin kind story? Kind of, yeah, yeah, but it's more based in real life yeah. as well. The story, however, does not stop here. The forty-nine brides who killed their husbands were punished for their crime. The myth says that when they died, their denaeads were forced to, to, into torment. For it, were forced into torment for eternity. Okay, hold this. They so, should carry jugs of water and fill a basin. They would be released from this punishment only if the basin was full of water. However, this torture would never stop because the basin had holes all over it and water would run out. That is such a god's punishment. Firstly, that sounds like a like a a challenge on Taskmaster. It does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, right. So, it, in the ancient world, it's a crime to disobey your father. Yep. But they are tormented for the whole of eternity. So that's a catch so, twenty two, so isn't it? It's a crime to disobey your parents, but it's also a crime to murder people. So if your parents say murder this person and you don't, that's a crime because you disobeyed your parent. Yeah. If you say, Okay, parents, I'll murder them, then you get punished for murdering people. So it's a real catch twenty two. It hey, really is difficult. Bear in mind this guy wanted to save his daughters and tried to save them out of thing. He has doomed them from all of eternity. So, yeah. Also, when they get into the underworld, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all being forced to like fill these basins up. Do you reckon they'll all be like, "Oh, this is so difficult"? And then Tantalus from the back is just like, "Oi, oh yeah, oh sorry, is that difficult? Oh, oh I'm sorry." Yeah, and Sisyphus is like, "Oh, oh I'm sorry, ladies. Is this? Oh, do you want to? You want to push this fucking rock up this mountain? No, didn't think so. Yeah. Back to the basin." <laughs> I like how Tantalus and Sisyphus are quite misogynist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm very it's like you've earned your place, lads. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, also the basin's quite a. Uh, I like it because they've had this idea, but haven't had enough of a original idea to give each all of them different ideas. Like, oh, just give it the basin. Mom. All of you do the basin. But also, like again with Tantalus and Sisyphus and all of them, like. You'd just give up after a while, wouldn't you? Like, they wouldn't still be now after, like, thousands of years trying to fill up the basin. I think after, if you'd be like, I've realised this. Or try and make plugs. Yeah, but I think it's, that's... You could, like, rip off party clothing and plug it up, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm assuming it's a massive, godly, otherworldly basin, though. It's probably got... Yeah, that, like, you know in, like, water parks, where you have, like, the big domes kind of thing, where yeah. you go spin round and round? A bit like, you know when you put a penny into those things and it spins yeah. around? You know, you know the warp part version of that. You know what I mean? What a convoluted idea! I just went for. Have you ever been to a water park? I have been to a water park. Yeah, I love water parks. Can we go to a water park? Let's go right now. There's actually one near here called Wet and Wild, and I want there, uh, uh, which is type of my sex tape, Uh, (laughs) (laughs) which is me crying. Ah! No, um, but um, I I went there for uh, my friend's fourteenth birthday, and. It was fine. Uh, yeah. can we it was last week. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, didn't invite me, yeah. but I came in my underwear. Uh, Shall we rank this mother? Let's rank this mother. If you are having your weed bit with cold milk, you are, for all intents and purposes, a moron. You're doing it wrong, people. Fuck it up, man. We're going to get rid of that. Have you ever seduced anyone with your, your voice? Not with my voice. <laughs> Let's clink our tea. That's really cold, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Mm. I was kind of hoping, like, you know when Walton Gromit Curse of the Wet? Sorry, I'm full of tangents today. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm very... You know, Curse of the Wear Rabbit at the oh start. My God. Uh, Wallace and Gromit kind of clink the glasses and the tea kind of go into each of his cups. Yeah. It'd be a bit of a piss take if like one of them was like decaps. Like, I didn't want your fucking tea, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's some uh, topical material. <laughs> Bring it out. Right, let's rank this. The Deneads. Oh, um, I like it. I enjoyed it. And a bit of origin, a lot of creativity, lots of different things, but also uh, at at the heart of it, a lot of evil as well. A lot of evil, yes. So, Dan, that's, uh, how do we usually rank it? We usually rank it the same way we're probably going to rank it now, which is life skills, morals, creativity, WTF. That's four categories, each one ranked out of ten, giving us a total of 12.5. Lol joke, it's 40. Uh, 
<laughs> Thank you. Ed. Oh, I'm genuinely quite embarrassed about that. Life anyway. skills, practical things we've learned. Uh, we have learned how to decapitate someone with a dagger. Yes, that's quite good. How to row a boat. Uh, Gene boat specialist, by the way. How long would it have taken them to get to Rhodes from uh, Ooh, from Egypt? I think a healthy. Or technically from Libya, because yeah. that's where he was when he got like kicked out. Bear in mind, I don't really know where either of those places are. I'm going to assume. So we have He's a sitting globe. right in front of a globe. All right, so Libya's so there. There's in, Libya. In Greece, I guess. Yeah. Oh wait, so it's not that it's far. It's like up there. Yeah, it's like. Oh, that's. Northeast. So it's not that far, so I'm going to assume about six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Go this way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this year's it, yeah. Uh, all the way, uh, there was a visual joke there, but we, I'm not going to explain it to you. Uh, but uh, so, practical, so, other practical things. Um, we learned how to. Fill up a, not fill up a basin? We also learned how to cater for 50 weddings. Yeah, we did. Uh, we also learned how to flee, and then like in a refugee yeah. kind of thing. Uh, we also learned how to. Uh, oh, and that's more morals. We learned how to overthrow someone. He's yeah. pointing at a statue and say, "That's my grandma." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, and no one did a DNA test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. no one was like, mm. they were just like, "Well, fair play." Imagine, this guy is obviously legit. Like a Jeremy Carl, but for like Greek gods, been like, uh, he is the king of Argos. Like, yay! Mm. Um, how about something to do with Bellas? Did Bellas do anything? Not really. Um, I, I guess we learned how to murder slash genocide on command. Um, we also learned... Um, mm, what else? How Have a low-profile wedding. Yeah. Also learn how to get, avenge people as well. Avenge your 48 brothers and Peter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Other than that, not much. What are you thinking? But then again, there is a large-scale murder, but not... Mm. And there's other things as well, uh, but not it's not impressing me too much. Right. I'm gonna say I'm a five or six. I think it's a. I think it's probably a five. Really, yeah, I think five. it's pretty pretty average. Five is what we always give the ones that are kind of down the middle. Yeah. Okay. Good. And next up is morals. Morals. These a lot are, here. A lot here. Yeah. Things we learned that morally, what kind of happened? Good or bad? It's just kind of so moral conundrums. Firstly, like, um, he kind of, uh, Bellas tried to give his two sons different things to not fight, but they were always fighting. Yeah. Egyptus was always very evil. Yes. Uh, and his... He's the evil twin. Yes. And, and, and his nephew, well, this is the interesting thing. I think this is a white son's score quite highly here. Because Egyptus is the more plainly wicked person here. And his, his sons are quite evil as well. And, it, um... Danaeus De- tried to save his daughters as much as possible. And ended up becoming the most evil. Yes, yeah, yeah he committed the most evil. Uh, although he was prompted by Egyptus, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, so I think that, that moral conflict quite interesting. Yeah. There, uh, well. Him saving his daughters, that's a good moral. Yes, but also... He, but, he actually willingly gave up his kingdom. That doesn't happen very often. Yes, yeah, but then he also... He didn't do it the second time either. No. Uh, but also he then thought... It, that and then forced him his, to force his daughters into... Killing her. and he's yeah. like, well, you can't do it, or else I'll disobey me. And he tried his daughter in court after that as well. Mm. So he did have quite a sharp turn character yeah. as well. Uh, so I think he's more probably of... grown bitter with age. Yes, yeah, yeah. Also, I imagine he's probably quite tired. He has fifty kids, and he moved them all. Real moving house is not an easy feat. Uh, I bet there was one of them was like, Dad, do we have? Listen, for the love of God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, we've learned that um, you can instantly become king if a you wolf both. wolf eats a yeah, cow. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, hmm, I think I think a lot of moral questions here. Morals and the whole like oh the the, the, the catch twenty two yeah that thing the catch twenty two is where it's and that also goes into WTF I think as yeah. well That's, Aphrodite like the gods said you know they were okay which is also creativity as well uh, I'm gonna say an old fashioned seven or eight I think I think seven or eight. Because I'm tempted I'm to say, say eight. eight. Yeah, because yeah. I think it has a lot of... It's the first time where it's not black and white. No, there was an, it was like realistic morals where someone could... You're not always a good person. You're not always a bad person. People change. It, it feels like a genuine story as well. Yeah. Where it's kind of like... Uh, this it's, obviously it, happened. It, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a real life story. Uh, so it's like... Uh, uh, Denise is trying to, uh, trying to do the good. He's trying to be good. Trying to protect his daughters. But then, in order to save his daughters, he does something genuinely horrific. But that's also out of love at the same yeah. time, and survival. So I think it's genuinely quite... I think eight. I think eight. 
Next up is creativity. It is quite creative. We've got gods, we've got evil, we've got, uh, we've got we've tomb got of murder. murder. We've got geography and land. And also burying the heads in Lerma as well. That's yeah, yeah. We've, nice got, we've got the little creative things like uh, the wolf eating the bull. Yeah. And we've got the gods. But then we've got bigger creative, like the narrative, how yeah. it created the Denian yeah. dynasty. Yes, the Argive kings as well. Mm. Uh, um, also, uh, 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 how uh, the person... The kind of the irony of having um, saving one of the king, uh, one of the nephews, and that nephew goes on to kill Danaeus, if you know what I mean. Yes, yeah, so yeah. there's a slight irony there. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's quite high in all fairness. I don't think it's uh, uh, it's not fireworks level. It's not like whoa, it's not a smorgasbord, but I think it has some really strength yeah. strength, to it, strength to it as well. I'm gonna say seven. I agree. Next up is WTF. I think we covered most of the things. Wolf eating bull. Wolf eating bull. The fact they have fifty sons and fifty daughters. By the fact four they were gonna marry yeah, by four months. The fact they were gonna marry them yeah. off, cousins together, the fact that they beheaded them. Yeah, because you know, inter- uh, incest it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I think yeah, some kind of and that's just the fact that just decapitating with a dagger as well and um, there's a lot of death and murder and Evil in the story, yeah. and uh, yeah, and the fact that it happens, I'm gonna say, I was six or seven. I'm gonna say seven. I don't see why it shouldn't be. Yeah, it's quite gory, and yeah. it's also got other bits of to it as well. Yeah. yeah, I think seven's good. All right, so I think so. We've got five for life skills, eight for morals, seven for creativity, and seven for WTF. So add that in the Dan Rhodes calculate machine. <laughs> <laughs> 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 5 is 19 <laughs> plus 8 is 27 Thank answer you. 26 <laughs> 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 Which one is it? 27 <laughs> uh, Thank you uh, <laughs> I genu- uh, um, It wouldn't be funny if it was 12.5 uh, But I um, Throughout the whole bit I was just rocking Dan Rhodes' head back and forth And I didn't need to do that But <laughs> Oh, damn, what a lovely podcast. Are you, are you going to be relaxing this week? I am going to be relaxing this week. Are you going to be mad, going to 50 weddings this week? No, I'm not. I'm going to a 40 Towers thing. What, really? Like a 40 Towers dinner. You have like dinner at 40 Towers and they like do a performance around you based on that. Oh, yeah. It's weird because I've never really seen 40 Towers. But... What? Yeah. Well, damn, we can't open this kind of one's list later into the podcast. Well, right? I have and, uh, yeah. Well, oh, man. Uh, oh, that's... Uh, see now, my uh, we, this, this is this is this is what should be at the start of a podcast. Then we can refer back to it all the way through. What you've done is tripped in a red herring at the end. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that more. No, I've just seen how uncomfortable no, no. you that you want to talk so much about it, and you've talked enough about its references yeah, today. Yeah, I've got too many tangents. Matt, who do you email if you want to email us? If you want to talk about red herrings, email us at a misspodcast at gmail dot com. You can also find us at Misfits on our Facebook page or Miss Podcasts on Facebook and at Twitter if you want to get in touch. Should we start on Instagram? No. Good. Uh, we can also... Uh, pl- uh, please find, uh, give us five stars on iTunes. Um, that'd be really appreciated. And also, how can you donate to us? Patreon or... Kofi. And what I've recently found out is the Patreon page hasn't been working for the entire time we've been plugging it. So uh, that's probably the reason why we've had zero. That must be the only reason we haven't had anyone donate. I feel a fool. But if you do want to donate and give us like a dollar a week or um, anything else, uh, we're going to put some um, uh, uh, some content on there soon as well. So yeah, donate and get, uh, and help out as much as possible. Costs us a lot to do this actually. So. Yeah, Dan came on the train today to see me in Yorkshire and... Um, I'd, I would never ask him to do that. Uh, go to Yorkshire for me. But it's very nice to see you. But um, yeah, so do help out. It just helps us pay for the podcast and give you more content. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk to you about the Spotted Tower things off air now. It's just going to blow my mind otherwise. But uh, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye. Myths. Myths. some like fake prophecies because this happens all the time but like, okay throw some things at me like animals and I have to give it like, a prophecy for okay me. do I need to do one for you gone um a a cow uh lies down in the summer sun
You're HIV positive. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly had no idea. <laughs> I'm not sure we should continue, but I'm also. Do we do two more? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was enjoying that. Um, <laughs>